Okay, we are live. And not only are we live, but we're late because I overslept because I have no idea. Okay. Oh, it's not going to do it. Maybe it's going to step. Yeah, because that's a little more lightweight. Yeah. So, yeah, here we are. My kitchen was to do a shout out Saturday this morning at. Uh, seven o'clock and then i overslept and i'm a little bit late but that's okay well uh, there's nobody here so i guess it doesn't matter anyway hmm. and not only am i late i am pretty much unprepared for this live stream because it's a shout out Saturday and I meant to shout out people. So what I'm going to do is go back and recycle some of my shout outs from before. Um, and I hope that that works and if it doesn't then I can go on loving. But let's see, fortunately I have them all recorded, all of my um, uh, previous shout outs. Uh, so what do we got here? Okay. I have to tell you that, oh, yesterday I went to Best Buy I bought myself. I should be waking up right now, shouldn't I? Um, yeah, yesterday I went to Best Buy and I bought myself a mouse because to this point I have been relying on the trackpad for my um, MacBook. That mouse has made my life so much easier. I just can't tell you. I'm using it right now. I think I, I, I think I will always be reliant on that mouse. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna wait for more people to gather. But um, so um, once again, this is a shout out Saturday, and because I came uh, late and unprepared, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna tell you some shout outs from previous. Um, uh, Saturdays because they're all still worthy of being shouted out, out shouted. Um, I don't, I don't know what the uh, past tense of shout out is. So um, I guess that's that's what we're doing. So we're gonna wait for more people to gather as I just babble on and on. Hmm. Oh. Goodness gracious. And here we are. And, you know, I'm just, I've been working on finishing this scarf. Now there's nobody here. Oh, no. Am I that boring? I guess I am. I guess there's nothing I can do about that. So I'm just going to keep babbling for a few minutes while uh, and see whether anybody comes in because it is early on a Saturday morning. Oh, hello, Ricola. Oh, Ricola is heading to work, so that must be why um, you had to leave. Um, that's okay. You can catch the replay. Um, so I'm just going to continue to babble on while I wait for some more people to gather. And if they don't gather, I'll just just I'll just do my shout outs and then um, let you guys go. So as most of you know, I do shout outs on Saturdays. 
On Sundays, I do poetry readings. On Mondays, I do interviews with men in the world of yarn, and I've met some amazing people doing that. On Tuesdays, I have Topic Tuesdays, which is a live stream. On Wednesdays, I have Wednesday Free For Alls, which is another live stream with, without a topic. Thursdays, I don't have anything scheduled, although I have been posting things uh, in recent Thursdays, even without scheduling. I had been doing quick Thursdays, but, you know, had to schedule in a break at some point. Fridays, I was previously doing um, tutorials every Friday. Oh, hey, Denisha, good to see you. Um, yeah, I was pr previously doing tutorials every Friday, but I was finding that a little bit um, overwhelming, so now I do a changing format on Fridays. I don't even call that a rotating format, because rotating implies some sort of structure and plan, and there really isn't. Yesterday, I uh, posted an interview with uh, Fiber Floozy, whom I hope most of you know, and if you don't, I hope you will go to that um, uh, replay uh, that, uh, and see it. And then we come back to Saturdays. Denisha uh, tells me not to burn myself out. I did. I, I had a period where I was burnt out. And, um, and you can usually tell when I uh, am stressed because I get snarkier than usual. And my usual is sort of snarky. Um, so, he hello, Maria Elena Valdivia. I love to say your name. Every time you come in the room, it makes me happy. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, so, I was burned out for a little bit, and I took a rest. Um, and um, I'm better now. But I, I do also, I plan rests. Okay, Ricola. Um, um, have a good day at work, and I hope you will come back and, and watch the replay and uh, see who who it is that I actually shout out. I have no idea who it's going to be. Oh, Denisha, you're so sweet. And yeah. The snarky is something that uh, it's an old defense mechanism that is not always easy to fight. And I, I know exactly what it is, but it's not always easy to resist. Um, well, actually, I'm going to finish this row. So I'm trying to finish up this scarf because it's been in process for a long time. This is another example of my hugs and kisses scarf so it's nothing more than alternating cross stitches and puff stitches and it gives this little uh, diagonal kind of, you know, diagonal kind of detail going on there which I think is lovely so but this thing has been in process for a long time and, and I'm going to send it off as a gift uh, pretty soon. Um, so as soon, um, Massachusetts, yeah, there's a lot of sarcasm. Yeah. And, you know, to some it is a form of humor. And, um, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And more often than not, things are a lot funnier in my head than they are when they come out of my mouth. And I'm probably not the only one that that happens to, but, um, but often that, that does happen to me. So I'm just gonna finish this row, and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna find some shout outs to, um, uh, to repeat. Now most of you know that my non-Yarny shout outs are, are mostly going to be about pet rescue because 
Uh, Denisha says that's me. Do you mean the part about it's funnier in my head than when it comes out of my mouth? Yeah, exactly. I'm 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 sure I'm not the only one that that happens to. And in, in fact, I have done so much therapy and so many different kinds of of um, groups and healing projects and things um, of, of that sort. And one of the biggest gifts was learning that there's nothing unique about me. Everything about me is universal. And that, that was a hard truth to learn, actually. But in the end, it's, it makes life easier. So I am, um, you know, all of these feelings that I think. Oh, exactly, Denisha. Um, exactly, Denisha. And, and especially, I've said things in uh, people's live streams that were taken completely wrong or um, I think that uh, people, well, of course, I mean, it's human nature. When you, when you hear a comment or you read a comment, you bring into it every bit of your own experience, everything that you know, and that, help, that is part of your interpretation of the comment. And the person who makes the comment doesn't know all of that. And it just makes it uh, more difficult. Okay, I finished that one row, so I'm going to yawn first. Oh. Excuse me. I'm wearing a hat because I look a mess today. And actually, there's my own hat, uh, my own hat design. Um, and I do have a bunch of hat patterns on my blog. Danisha, Danisha, you are exactly right. I'm being who God created me to be. And I've been actually, I've been working with a, a friend of mine, long, long time friend of mine. Um, and she's always asking me, what is my unique voice? What do I have to tell the world? And lately, uh, a new question is, who needs to hear my voice? And how can I reach whoever that is, whether it's one person or more than one person? And the only thing, I don't have answers, definitive answers to either question, but the only thing that I can do right now is just take what I understand to be the right actions and let go of the results. So Denisha, you understand what I'm saying. I, I, I knew we had an understanding, even though you love Fiber Spider more than you love me. But then who doesn't? Um, okay. Now let's talk about shout outs. So everybody who knows me knows that my non Yarny shout outs are going to be all about, uh, almost always they're gonna be about pet rescue. So the first one I'm gonna talk about there is Project Freedom Ride. Um, and of course all of the links are gonna be in the description. Um, Project Freedom Ride is a project that uh, was begun by a young boy named Noah. Uh, I'm sure, well, I'm not going to say I'm sure. You might have seen some of his YouTube videos. He started out doing videos on social media um, about individual pets in need of rescue or foster. And uh, he has become... A sensation and he's still still a young boy it's only been going on a few years but he's um, done amazing work and many 
many, many animals have found foster and, and forever homes because of his efforts. And I think that this, this boy is just amazing. And of course, another one is the Asher House. There's this fellow named Lee Asher. Um, he started out like in an RV traveling around the country to bring awareness to pet rescue. And then he settled down. He bought this, um, basically it's, it's a farm. It's a large um, uh, property uh, in, oh somewhere in the northwest i can't remember exactly which state i think it's oregon but i'm not sure oh excuse me oh but he has done um <laughs> oh, did he oh i think you're funny um um uh, he has done amazing work to bring awareness to um, um, pet rescue. And hello, Russell. Hello, Sanita. Glad to see you. So I was I was just giving some of my non Yarny shout outs right now. So Lee Asher, uh, the Asher House, and of course all the links will be available um, um, when this becomes a like a permanent replay. Um, and I was saying he uh, traveled the country bringing awareness to pet rescue and helping individual organizations um, to um, uh, find fosters and uh, forever homes for their, hello Jennifer, for uh, their animals. And now he has a permanent um, uh, place where he has a big house and a lot of land and he has, I have no idea how many dogs, but a whole bunch of dogs. He's also got a llama, a couple of pigs. I think he's got at least one bird and maybe even a lizard. Um, but he's still all about the rescue. Um, and he is just amazing. His energy, his optimism is amazing. And he admits that he has his own struggles to remain um, positive, especially because over time, because he's been doing this, he has lost some of these pets. They have, he's lost them to age or disease. Um, and that happens when you have pets and he has shared his struggle to deal with that as well. So that link will be in the um, uh, description. There's another uh, another link that is called um, "No No Dog Left Behind," and their focus is saving dogs that uh, rescuing dogs that are meant for the meat industry in Southeast Asia. And I just cannot talk about that anymore without crying. And it would not be the first time I cried on a live stream. It's true. But I have to uh, move along. So, oh, Denisha, oh, you have to look up this boy. It's uh, Project Freedom Ride. Uh, oh, another thing I have to mention is the Rainbow Railroad. Um, I should have been talking about this all along because I have, June is known as Pride Month and I have mixed feelings about Pride Month because I think every month should be Pride Month just like I think every month should be um, Black History Month and every month should be what? Women's Awareness Month. Every month should be Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, but the Rainbow Railroad is, uh, their mission is to rescue, usually it's young people, but not always, people in countries where 
just for the mere uh, suspicion of being LGBTQ uh, plus um, someone will be persecuted, prosecuted, executed. There are stories of these people being put in burlap bags and thrown off of buildings. So this organization has been around for several years seeking to rescue the, the, uh, the people who are affected and to help them find asylum um, and uh, permanent homes in, in countries where they are allowed to, you know, live. And by live, I mean live, not reside, but live, continue to be. Okay, let's talk about yarn. I suppose the first one I should uh, talk about is Fiber Floozy because, and her link will be in the description. Um, I interviewed her yesterday and posted that interview yesterday. Um, and she's just fun. Her name is Jill. And she is just a whole bunch of fun. She does designs, she does tutorials, and she does live streams, and I always enjoy watching her. Mm. My mouth gets dry when I talk all the time. <laughs> and I talk all the time. Okay, let's see. Who else should I do? There are a ton of people um, I have met through Instagram and then uh, found them on, um, on YouTube afterwards. One of them, I should mention, mention Vincent Greenheight. On Instagram, he is known as Not Bad, K N O T dot B-A-D. He is a young guy who, he's sort of a punk crocheter. He does a lot of amigurumi. I have reached out to him to see whether I could interview him for my Monday Men series, and I need to just keep reaching out because I haven't heard back. I don't know whether he has received or seen my messages and ignored them or just not but I want to. Hello, Nancy. Glad to see you. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's the first one. Not bad. Not K-N-O-T dot bad. And another one to talk about is um, Knitted by Macho Man. His name is Federico. I did interview him. He is fantastic. He's a perfectly, perfectly um, lovely guy meaning that he's just, no, oh, excuse me, so very nice. He does really, really beautiful work. He is, um, I believe, half Finnish and half Portuguese. He lives in Portugal right now. And uh, he has actually been featured. Hey, Bev. Uh, glad to see you. Um, hey, Gina. Glad to see you too. Um, so I was just uh, listing some of my people, um, just repeating a bunch of people really, because I'm totally unprepared. I was late doing this and unprepared. So I'm just repeating people from past weeks, which, you know, every last one of them deserves to be repeated. Um, so I was just talking about Knitted by Macho Man, who is in Portugal. He has been featured on Portuguese uh, television because, of course, a man doing yarn uh, is is unusual. It depends upon where you are. Oh, hey, Bonnie got nips. Um, you know, some places more unusual than others, and you know, I think in in the U.S. Um, it has become less and less of a news story. Oh yeah, it's another man doing doing knitting on the subway. Blah, blah, work, work. Although I have to say, I used to really enjoy um, when 
my ex and I would get on the um, commuter train going into Manhattan and he would pull out a project. I would enjoy watching people watch him because that was fascinating. Hello, Melissa. I didn't see you come in. Glad to see you. Um, so let's see who else can I call out today. Um, I'm recycling uh, people today because I'm totally unprepared. Oh, oh, here's another person you should look for on. Um, oh, here's one. Oh, there are so many. I don't know. Ah. Um, okay, here's one. Uh, his name is Efraim Villanueva. He's on um, Facebook. I think he's also on Instagram. He's a young man in the Philippines. I mean, young by meaning early 20s and does really great work. Um, and of course, because he's in the Philippines, um, he has to work m with materials and textures to create garments that work for that climate. And so he's really creative. Uh, and I love to see creativity like that. Hmm. Yes. And there's another one I wanted to mention here. You know, some of them will not uh, surprise you that I'm mentioning them. Um, because some of them I talk about obsessively every day anyway. Here's one. His name, his name is Peter Bizuito, uh, also known as Naked Guy Crocheting. He, he's actually, he's a big bearish kind of guy who is an actor and comedian. Um, and his name is Peter. And so his um, YouTube channel is called My Big Funny Peter. I did not make that up. It really is called that, My Big Funny Peter. But he has done a series called Naked Guy Crocheting, where it's it's a little bit like a talk show, uh, and he has a sidekick, you know, sort of like Ed McMahon, and uh, he's he's pretty darn funny, and he's also um, he takes phone calls and gives um, you know pretty sensitive advice to people. So I would I would. Um, um, suggest looking him up. So how many Yarny people have I done? I think that's about five. I'm going to go, I, I should have been making notes because I don't know who I did uh, um, today. Um, but um, actually, oh, so that's, that's pretty much um, all I have to share today in terms of um, of links, but um, since we have some time, at eight o'clock, we all have to go over and see um, Affordably Geeky. Um, that would be Affordably Crafty Kim and the Yarn Geek Ginger. They do a, wait a minute, is this the week that they're taking off for vacation? I don't know for sure. But anyway, I just posted the link if anybody wants to come up and, and join me for a chat. That would be fun, too. Because I always enjoy that. That's, that's, I have done quite a few of these live streams where um, I would start out just really tired and worn out and thinking, what am I doing here? And then I would get people up here chatting with me and be totally energized by the end of the end of the time. And sorry that we had to leave because usually. Oh, Denisha, is that the is that their plan for today? Oh, I think that's great. Then we will go to see Affordably Geeky today. And if somebody wants to post the um, link for Kim Affordably Crafty, that would be lovely. Um, because I know there are moderators in the room. Denisha, you're blue, right? If you're not, I'm quite surprised. Um, 
but um, so I would love it if people would uh, would come up. I would because uh, that's always fun. It looks like we have eleven people in the room right now, which is quite lovely. And I would also love it if every one of you, I haven't been tracking the uh, hearts. Oh, Denise says Dana's going to be talking about the Christmas in July fairy thing. And you know, I, she sent me information about that and I just need to reread it to totally understand it uh, and then make a decision about whether I'm going to participate. I have not decided yet. What do you guys think? Should I participate in the Christmas in July fairy um, business? Um, anyway, there we go. I'm going to... Oh, going to yawn again. Gina says yes. So, Gina, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you, Denisha. Thank you so much. Uh, Bonnie used to live in Providence. Now she works she, and worked in Worcester. And now she gets jealous being reminded of all the um, um, local yarn shops uh, that she missed out on. And Denisha, I knew you were somewhere up there, but I had forgotten exactly that you do live in Worcester. I hope I'm saying it correctly because people don't know how to say Worcester. It's not Worcester. Which is how I used to say it. <laughs> Worcester. Yeah. Russell doesn't completely understand the Christmas fairy thing. So I think in July you will see a lot of um, people posting videos explaining it. Basically, it's another one of these cooperative... Um, giveaway things where each individual channel hey Barbara didn't see you come in um uh, it's one of these um, cooperative things where each channel will choose a uh, uh, a finalist and then all of those finalists um, are considered in the end by the primary channel and that channel will uh, choose a grand prize winner. Um, and there are more, you know, each one of these programs that does that sort of cooperative thing, they have their own individual um, um, focuses. And I don't, I, I need to learn more about it myself to decide whether, um, Denisha, you'd be welcome to pop up if you, uh, if, if you, here's the link again. Um, <laughs> okay, so it would be fun to have both of you up here. Wouldn't that be great? Anyway, so um, yeah, that's 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 pretty much my understanding. Where there are um, multiple channels participating, each one of them has a finalist, and then and then the um, the primary channel chooses a grand prize winner. Oh. Excuse me, I'm yawning and burping all over the place. So, okay, there's Bev. Excuse me, I'm yawning and burping all over the place. That means I need to put my earbuds in, doesn't it? So, so I have my okay. turned off. There we go. Good morning. Hi. Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. 
Oh, I better get the dog. Oh, okay. I just realized I left someone else running. And so that was what I was hearing. Somebody else uh, who had a sort of a marathon live stream. Okay, now I can hear you and only you. Look at that. Oh my have goodness. Have you met Isaac before? I think I have, but I'd forgotten. He's so cute. Always giving you kisses. <laughs> He's a very old man. Oh, is he? Yes, he is oh. 14. Oh my goodness, that is old, especially for a chihuahua, right? He can't see very well, but... <laughs> but look, he loves his mommy, I know. He, I think he loves his bed more now. <laughs> well, at, at that advanced stage, wouldn't we all? Mm. So am I live like um, other people can You are. Every, yeah, you know, exactly. Good morning, everyone. So, yeah, be careful. Don't pick your nose on camera. I'll try not to. I might drink coffee. Well, I've been drinking iced tea as we've been going along okay. because, you know, when, I, when you talk as much as I do, your throat does get a little dry. <laughs> and I'm known for running my mouth. So I promised there would be shameless self-promotion, David. Have you heard about my um, crochet along, knit along, make along? I think so, but tell me more. So it starts July 16th and people can knit or crochet a bag along with me and then I'll show you how to felt it. And to learn more, of course, go watch my two most recent videos one talks about how to make the bag and the other one talks about the prizes. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I have never felted anything. I am a felting virgin. Um, it's um, That's why I'm starting with a really small, easy project. Mm -hmm. and I was just thinking today that I might do a short where I um, felt a swatch, you know, just a small piece. That sounds like a good idea. I thought that because... I made a suggestion on one of my videos that if you don't know if your yarn will felt, that's an excellent way to find out is make a tiny piece. And that's something so small, you can felt it in your kitchen sink by hand in a few minutes and find out if your fiber felts. So generally speaking, how do you know? How are you going to know? 100% wool will felt. So okay. if you buy, say, Patton's Classic Wool or I Love This Wool, which at Hobby Lobby, I found some of that. I love this wool on deep discount. And that, that oh, really, yes. Oh, um, very nice. So any of those commercial yarns that are 100% wool will work. But it, say you have a mystery fiber that you think is wool or you suspect it might be um, superwash because superwash will not felt. So if you suspect oh. superwash, you might want to swatch it and try felting it before you make something you're going to felt. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've I've never known. So Denny is up here. Andrea just came in the um came in the room. Andrea is local to me and just this past week she shared with me some of her Hobby Lobby haul. She had gone there uh, with you know all the sales that they've been having and shared some really nice things with me. So um Well when so I did my Hobby Lobby video and I bought the um I love this wool. Mm -hmm. I wrote a story about my Hobby Lobby video and I narrated on my channel. So that's another video you guys could watch to find out more about wool. Um, okay. But, that, I think that's great. Yeah. But so, I'm going to get out of the way and let other folks visit. Thank you, David. So much so, for letting me come up and have a few minutes to talk course. about what's going on on my channel. I really appreciate that. Great of way to course. start my Saturday. <laughs> and then so, um, in my uh, town where I live, I'm sorry, I want to tell you one more thing because I think you'll. It, well, of course. Um, I'm probably going to miss a little bit of Affordably Geeky because I'm going to go over to a local coffee shop where they're having a great a gay pride event. 
So I'm going to go over there and give out some mom hugs if they need them. Get a cup of coffee. Have Everybody and needs a mom hug. And um, watch some Affordably Geeky. Oh, I think that's great. I think that's great. Thank you so much. Everybody have a great day. And I love all my Yarny friends. I love going around to these lives and seeing people like Denny that I just saw a minute ago. Hi, Denny. Hi, hey, Denny. Great Saturday. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming up. Okay, it's you and me, Denny. Mm. Yes, it is. So, um, we were talking about Christmas in July, and you yeah. were going to, um, you I'll know more about it than about I do. Because um, I, I, was, I watched Dana put it on last year, and it was extremely successful. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. Things look like a hot mess. Oh, you look just fine. There's nothing wrong with how you look. Anywho, so Christmas in July fairies, it's a basically a bunch of content creators. Some cro from the crochet community, some from the knitting, some homesteaders. We have this one guy that talks about Christmas lights. There's so many different people. I think 175 people um, participated last year. And wow. Mama Swift won the grand prize. She ended up getting packages to her house. I think even as recently as just recently. So she got 175 packages to her house. So if you win the whole shebang, you could end up with a lot of happiness. So um, I guess what the way it goes is you, you end, first you enter the small drawings. And once you get into the, gut, the big drawing, then they'll, they'll put all the names in. And for as many times as you enter, you get on the board and then once you're on the board they'll do probably a random common pick or something to that effect and then some will be chosen as the grand prize winner so i i okay yeah yeah dana sent me um basically it was a word document with all the 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 details spelled out yeah, uh, she just, did that I, because. Yeah, I'm sorry. She did that because last year there was questions and people got a little persnickety and do to do. So this year she got a, um, what do you call those? An assistant, and so it's going a lot smoother for her. Uh, well, I mean, as yeah. you know, she she is a full time truck driver, and a dog mom, and has other responsibilities. So that was just a lot for her to take on, trying to manage all the fairies, and. Fairies are hard to manage. Oh, let me tell you, honey. They, they were out of control. Some of them. <laughs> the subscribers were out of control. The fairies, it was just, some of it was a hot mess. But once it all evened out, it was, a, it was so much fun. Um, I, think I, I, I think I will have to participate then. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reread that, that email from Dana and just make sure I understand everything. Yes. And then that, that's I will. True. I, I will do that. And everybody keeps telling me that that's a way to gain viewers and watch hours. And well, I'm doing very well in same. both of those. Her but and I kind of feel the same way about that. If that's your goal, then that's great. But the odds of people sticking around after it's over are slim to none. And you don't want people just to join your channel. You want people to be interactive. That's how your channel is exactly. going to stay the long haul. Uh, uh, so many people are worried about hours and this and that. Urgh, I think we're not seeing a lot of people's authentic self. We're, we're seeing a version of who they want us to think they are. And I'm not attracted to that. I want to see who somebody is, let it all hang out, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and then I can make my choice on whether I want to be subscribed to your channel. I don't need the bells and the whistles and all the other stuff that's been going on. The community has changed so many times since I've been watching YouTube, since I started hanging out with, um, oh, my other boyfriend, Mikey, from the Crochet, crochet Crowd. Crowd. Yeah. And to watch the way that YouTube's just changed in the last 10 years, it, it's it's crazy. Well, some everything sort of change, better and changes some not. And, and evolves. But, uh, you know, as we were saying earlier in this hour, that I've, I've been learning 
what my true voice is and trying to show that more and more and um that is where the fulfillment comes and as a side benefit i've been growing um because if 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 i were growing as a result of not being true to myself at the end it would just shoot me in the butt but i think that just showing my true self whatever the hell that is um um there the, the people do respond to that i mean i can be funny i can even be funny without being snarky and i can be clever and you know i i can also crochet a little bit so um i do have something to offer to the world um and i would not always have been able to say that but i'm just learning as we go along andrea says she's a big fan yes that's just the other day i um i went to see andrea um because as i mentioned she's local to me i went to see her and she um oh, uh, that's to, cool to take her uh, some of my postcards because she's going to an event soon where she will, she wants to distribute them on my behalf, which also is quite lovely. So, you know, sometimes I, you know, I'm sure this also is human nature. Um, sometimes I don't always understand why people like me so much. I think we all struggle with that from time. Some of us, long term and sometimes we struggle with it throughout our life but i mean yeah, from what the heck oh go, daniel is here hi daniel all right i was trying to sign in on my tablet so i could also moderate because it looks like i am the only one in there oh and jane is here too hi jane we love jane she is always it's funny oh, daniel um how are you feeling jane Jane recently has been go undergoing some specific sort of therapy for her migraines, and I hope that's been turning out well. Um, right, exactly, Bonnie. Okay. Bonnie said that the main, the main reason she joined... Um, YouTube was to get to have friends and like-minded people, which I agree with. Well, that's why you join any kind of community is, is you're looking for, for people you can identify with. But I think people. she's also a YouTuber. I think so many people have this idea that they're going to get rich <laughs> real quick on YouTube. You have to be oh, on that is not gonna happen. 15 years and have a loyal fan base and really hit those high numbers in order to make good mythical morning money. You know, you don't just wake up one day and boom, you're, you're YouTube famous with all the money. Yeah, even the people with big, big numbers on YouTube, they have diversified income streams, whether it's merch, whether it's patterns, whether it's other well, that, things on exactly. top of the YouTube income, because you cannot count on any, especially in the online world, you cannot count on anything lasting. Well, exactly. Which side is it? Okay, Jane says the migraines seem to be under better control, but her back is now giving her problems. <sighs> oh, dear. Uh, a, a lumbar epidural block. Oh, ouch. Although in the end, I guess it's ouch less if it works. Exactly. But, yeah, ouch. I've never had an epidural of any sort. They are, um, not, they are not fun. Yeah, I, I, I hope I don't. How old's my oldest? He's going to be 27. So mm -hmm. almost... Eight years ago, I had an epidural with him, and till this day, I can tell you when it's going to rain because I can feel it still in that spot on my back. Really? Wow. Wow. 
Now, my sister is a year older than I am, and she and I always, always had big, big uh, weight issues. She was a nurse for a, a long time, and nursing is very physical work. People don't always realize that, but it is very physical work. A lot of things nowadays are, are, are like delegated to techs in, in the hospitals, but um, she is not one to delegate. And when she started out in the 80s, um, nurses still did that work. So she, to this day, she has real pain issues with her back. And now she has uh, issues with her, her ankles. Last, last year, about a year ago, she broke her ankle. Um, and I'll never forget seeing her after she had fallen and seeing a joint in her at her ankle where a joint is not supposed to be. Oh God! Uh, of course, I have to call nine one one and everything. But um, yeah, that was that was scary. Sunita says she's going to snooze some more. Snoozing is a very good thing. I love snoozing. I'm all for it. Bonnie says that lots of folks, uh, apparently on, uh, I think she means on YouTube, but probably mm -hmm. a lot of different um, online channels, are flash, flashes in the pan, hoping to cut in. Yeah. Exactly. And as, as Dana, whom I think all of us follow, um, uh, has been saying all along that the the number of channels, the amount of noise increased because of the pandemic when everybody was at home. But now that whatever normal is going to be is coming to be and people are leaving the, the house again, um, a lot of those things are going to die out and, and those of us who are persistent and, uh, and keep doing it. Um, it's, you know, patience and perseverance made a bishop of his reverence, you know? 100%. And, and I don't think a lot of people understand that. This let's get big quick and sub, sub, sub and playlist, playlist, playlist. That's not what's going to keep you here. It's putting out good content. A lot of the people that I've been following for 10 plus years are, is because of the content they put out and the relationship I've made with them. It has nothing to do with me working a full, basically it takes subscribers just as much work to help a YouTuber as it does YouTubers. So you need both parties, but uh. it's become a full-time job. Run this playlist, run that playlist. Watch all the ads. Do, 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 do. You weren't in my life. I don't have time for that. I'm sorry. I'm a grandmother and my kids don't really want me to be on YouTube 24 7. So I can't do the way I used to, you know, as they, they're young and I want to make memories with them. I don't want them to be like, oh, Graham was on YouTube all the time. I want them to see that, you know, I spent time with them. I made them think I did things with them. Well, exactly. And it's. It's, we all have to have our own lives. Um, and some of us are trying to turn it into a job. That doesn't mean that I want people to make subscribing to me uh, be a job. I am grateful for the support that I have. And I am always, um, you know, seeking increasing support but at the same time, my job is to just take the right actions and let go of the results. Because taking the right actions is what, in the end, gives me fulfillment. You know, doing the crochet, creating things, interacting with people. You know, we were talking about our uh, finding our voice. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm learning that the, 
I find my voice in doing live streams like this because I really enjoy them. And also in doing interviews like I've been doing. I really enjoy those. I learn so much as I try to edit those interviews and then post them. And, you know, I make editing mistakes. I, there are some of the things, but I'm learning. And um, also I have to say, yeah, I have a rather old MacBook. Um, so yesterday I went out, I bought a mouse that was compatible with a MacBook so I don't have to like use the trackpad. It has changed my life in one day, just having that mouse. I can't tell you how much. Uh, I, was, I was actually thinking of, of replacing my MacBook, which also would be a very difficult thing to manage. Um, but I think I can get by with this mouse and the, and the MacBook that I have for uh, a long time. Anyway. Again, I'm running my mouth. So Jane says, "Yeah, it, sometimes if all the uh, if, if all the celestial bodies are in alignment, you are found fast, and you know you gain notoriety. But you know you can lose it very quickly too." I think I, Crystal Bag O'Day has been doing a wonderful, wonderful job with just showing how one person just giving you a shout out, the right person can make all the difference. I am just amazed at all the people she's been shouting out lately. Their numbers have going through the roof. And I think that's huge. If you get an endorsement from someone that people trust, they're going to be like, oh, well, they must check their channel. Out. They must know that they're true blue. Let's give it a shot. People don't want to a uh, subscription to someone that's, not themselves. Exactly, exactly. And actually, I benefited myself one time. I, I think I was, at the time I was still working on like 750, and she gave me a shout out, and within a week I had an, an additional 500. Well, and, she has a loyal fan base. Yeah, uh, and, some of them are fanatical, actually. YouTube a, a long time, as you know. Mm -hmm. Ooh, boy, you know, when she would have her giveaways and people didn't win, she'd lose subs like nothing. But if that's all you're there for, then that's what you're going to get. I don't care well, about I, winning giveaways. I've won some giveaways. It's been a blast. Great, praise the Lord. But in the grand scheme of things, I care nothing about giveaways. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I've won one or two giveaways, including one of Crystal's about, I think it's two years now. Um... But that's not really the purpose. And as I have often said recently, I need more yarn like I need a hole in the head. Um, and hey, we got, we, I didn't know about you. What? That I need a hole in the head? A little, no, smarty pants. <laughs> 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 that you had quite the yarn collection. I do, actually, because, well, I have been collecting it. People have been gifting me with yarn. Um, and it's, I can't use it as fast as I, as I bring it in. And, uh, even the blue yarn, people have been gifting me with blue yarn and that's okay. Um, that's a, that's a lovely thing, but that also complicates the, the, one of the, the questions for my hat not hate contest is how much yarn am I going to have left over? But that's, it's like doing calculus because the beginning point is always changing because people keep giving me blue yarn. Oh, uh, yeah, I understand. And that's okay, too. And, you know, it's just going to be... It is what it is. And I can't make it more complicated or sophisticated than it is. Um, the big thing is how many hats... And lately, I've, I've had to tell myself I'm not in a contest. I don't have to make 14,000 hats. I can do other things if, if the other things um, are, if the other things are what 
my soul needs to do today. Do you know what I mean? I'm a firm I can't, believer in that. I'm a firm believer in that. If, if I feel like I'm forced to do hat, 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 it becomes a job and there is no joy in it. I do understand that. When I was making my daughter's sweaters, because I accidentally put up a pattern about... Bagel Day made this beautiful cardigan. And I was like, I cannot wait to make this for myself. All three of my daughters put little eyes on there. And they're like, oh, mommy, I need this. So for Christmas, I whipped out three black sweaters. So they could have them because they wanted them and then my sister was like oh I need one too and I was like oh my goodness what did I get myself into I'll bet you felt totally burnt out after doing all of that it wasn't that bad it, the, the issue was just making sure that the light was bright enough for the black yarn and now I know the pattern front which backwards and sideways mm -hmm. but I enjoyed it and the girls all love their sweaters and they wear them so I'm like yay that's good well, actually, it is after 8 o'clock right now, so we should probably um, um, go over to see Affordably Geeky because we do enjoy them. Um, um, and uh, Denny posted the link uh, earlier about that. Yeah, Snugs is talking about uh, how hard it is to work with black yarn and I'm sorry I didn't welcome you in Snugs when you came because I um, I noticed you but I was in the middle of conversation so um, but uh, yeah uh, I will jump down and add the link again oh thank you that would be very kind like, do it from here you could actually do it from here oh. anyway as soon as, as, as Denny posts the link to um, Affordably Geeky. We will go over there and we could call it a raid if you like. There aren't that many of us, but it, we could still call it a raid. I always enjoy uh, watching them. Um, in fact, my I, I would say my introduction into the yarning community was um with ginger the the yarn geek oh thank you denisha denisha has just posted the link for um affordably crafty which is where we find affordably geeky on saturday mornings um anyway so i want to thank everybody for coming in we're going to um end now and go over to uh, affordably geeky those of us who can uh, stay and um you know like subscribe comment share all the standard youtube crap and keep coming back thank you all so much bye bye